Welcome and please stand as Jack, Mike, and Danny McCabe lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Right around the back there. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thanks, guys. Post 202 Chaplain Dick Brawl will now pray for us and with us. The intent and purpose of this prayer is to give you faith, hope, and inspiration. Hopefully, it will encourage prayer and bring peace and tranquility into your life. May it be a, a reminder of God's love, guidance, and his many blessings that he has given us. Amen. 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 And cover. Seated here at the uh, head table is uh, our commander Eric Sonnet and our post chaplain Dick Brawl, who you just heard from. My name is Mike Whale, and I'm the adjutant for our local American Legion post. The Legion believes it is important to keep this tradition alive, and we appreciate everyone's attendance here this morning. I'll now introduce Katie Schneider, Hopkins High School student, field hockey player, and a much appreciated volunteer for events like this. Katie? Veterans Day is a day different from all others. It is a day where people can take the time to remember those who have served in protection of our rights and freedoms for this great country. For some, Veterans Day may be every single day. A day won't go by where they don't remember the days at war or the pain when learning their loved ones would never make it home. But for others, especially young people, the meaning of the day is not fully understood. It is hard to teach someone without showing them the perils and sacrifices of war and service. And for this, some people have a hard time relating to veterans. For me, a 17-year-old senior from Hopkinton High School, I had fallen under this category. I had never really known how to approach veterans without feeling like I said something wrong or didn't say enough of what I really wanted to, to thank them for their service. I had learned about what they had been through in school, but could never really fathom how they must feel surviving it all. Too many times I'd been too shy to speak up or ask them the questions that I wanted to. One of these people was my grandfather, Leonard Schneider, who served as a bombardier in World War II. There are so many things I wish I would have said to him while he was alive, but didn't. With the help of the writer, Kathy Maxwell, I would like to say them now to you all today. Hopefully the message can live on. Thank you for stepping forward when others step back. Thank you for placing yourself between us and danger. Thank you for delaying plans for college, marriage, and other opportunities in choosing to serve. Thank you for braving the unspeakable horrors of war. Thank you for sacrificing time with your families and missing those significant milestones the rest of us take for granted. Thank you to your spouses who find themselves living nomadic lives, often far away from the support of loved ones. Thank you to your children who accept your absence as a way of life and understand they share you with a nation and sometimes the world. Thank you for continuing to support your country once you leave military service by following new careers and becoming the teachers, clergy, business owners, employees, pilots, civil servants, and so much more that we need to be a successful society. Thank you for involving yourself in your local community, your state, and your country, helping us to solve problems and to create a vision for our future using the skills you learned during your tour of duty. Thank you for being a conscience to our nation. Thank you for serving as a heroic example of who we are and what we can dream to be. Thank you for your service. Dr. Katie. Thank you very much. One of the mainstays of every Veterans Day ceremonies is the uh, recital of the poem in Flanders Field, written by Colonel John McRae in 1915. My daughter Sarah will do the honors today. 
In Flanders fields the poppies blow, between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and on the sky, the lark still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below, we are the dead short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from falling hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high, if ye break faith with us who die. We shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Thanks, Sarah. Last year, Mary Harrington gave us a little uh, lesson in Hopkinton history when she recalled the life of Emmett Carey. Uh, this morning, she's adding another chapter to her, our history book, and it's Mary Harrington. Good morning. <coughs> I spoke with uh, Michael, and we've decided to uh, honor each of the 12 people from Hopkinton that uh, were lost during World War II. And the f first one to be lost was Michael's uncle, William Whalen. And uh, I'd like to read the following. William Whalen was born on August 30th, 1921, in Hopkinton. <clears throat> he was the son of Thomas and Sa Sadie Clary Whalen and lived on Pleasant Street. And he was one of eight children in the family, six boys and two girls. He joined the Army in July 1942 and was assigned to the 346th Bombing Squadron, 98th Group, and where on December 15, 1943, he was killed while delivering supplies to Italy. He was buried in Tunisia and in May 1947, his remains were brought home to Hopkinton for final burial. He was the first Hopkinton soldier, soldier to die in the line of duty. The following, I'm quoting from the Framingham News. His body arrived at the Framingham train st station, station, and the official party proceeded to motor convoy to the edge of Framingham, where it dismounted and marched to the rail platform. It was a touching sight to witness colors from both Legion posts and the post flag, flanked by color guards standing on the station platform. The delegations in orderly rank standing behind the colors with a sprinkling of uniforms formed a background. As the train came to a stop, the uniformed bearers, Richard Claflin, John Cahill, who's right here in case nobody Same knows. one? He's the only one. Donald Brownlee, Walter Lowe, Ray Fair, and Arthur Keenan <clears throat> moved towards to receive the body from the Army Detachment, and it was transported by hearse. The delegations moved out behind the funeral cortege to march to the outskirts of Framingham, where a motor convoy was formed and, under police escort, proceeded to the Doughboy statue. The procession was reformed and proceeded down Main Street and to the Carolyn Ann Funeral Home, where his body lay in state. <clears throat> a high mass of requiem was celebrated at St. John the Evangelist Church, and a military burial took place at St. John's Cemetery. Um, Michael was uh, good enough to give me uh, the folder with all the information that his grandmother had saved uh, when Bill was lost, and in it was a citation of honor that was signed by uh, H. Arnold, General U.S. Army, Commanding General Army Air Force, and it's entitled A Citation of Honor, Sergeant William F. Whalen, who gave his life in the performance of his duty, December 15, 1943. He lived to bear his country's arms. He died to save its honor. He was a soldier, and he knew a soldier's duty. His sacrifice will help to keep aglow the flaming torch that lights our lives, that millions yet unborn may know the priceless joy of liberty, and we who pay him homage and revere his memory in solemn pride rededicate ourselves to a complete fulfillment of the task for which he so gallantly has placed his life upon the altar of man's freedom. Thank you. Thank you.
those of you who are not World War II era vets uh, were probably surprised to know that when someone is killed in uh, battle back in, in, you know, during World War II, they're buried on site in an uh, American cemetery, whether in North Africa or, or in Europe. And uh, it was many years later, and some three, four, five years later before there was actually uh, the bodies came home. Um, so that, that's a long grieving process for uh, parents, I'm sure, to go through uh, during those days. And now, of course, in a completely different story, uh, and the bodies are flown back almost immediately from uh, you know, the Middle East. Veteran is a word we used to describe a person who served in the armed forces, whether during war time or periods of peace. These veterans, men and women, made sacrifices for their friends and families at home. But a young man in his late teens, early 20s, probably does not consider their enlistment a noble act. More than likely, their reasons were impulsive. Well, they were looking for a new adventure. Every veteran has a story. Maybe they were influenced to enlist by a family member, a friend. Some might have been inspired by a television show or a movie like Sands of Iwo Jima, John Wayne. I remember when high school guidance counselors used to recommend the service as the best option for an unmotivated student. However, I believe the real reason Americans be became soldiers is because of a basic human emotion to preserve life as we know it. It is a sense of duty that was probably instilled in our brains at a young age, reinforced by our parents and glamorized on television. Just like the 16-year-old who feels invincible when they first get their driver's license, a 19-year-old new, new recruit has no fear. Eventually, reality sets in and a greater appreciation of life is gained. We remain optimistic and hope that a life of peace will be in our children's future. To paraphrase it, a famous American general when asked why he became a soldier, he answered, I became a soldier so my daughter could be a journalist and her daughter could be an artist and her daughter could become President of the United States. There is security and strength, strength that comes from our military, a military made up of individuals that had the sense of duty and the patriotism to become soldiers. I thank God I had the ability and opportunity to become a Marine, and aside from my daughters, it is my proudest accomplishment. I'd like to continue this ceremony by remembering the veterans from Hopkinton that we have lost since last Veterans Day. Some of these men I knew, some of them, I guess they were just passing through, but they all had Hopkinton connections. Curtis Melvin, 81 years old, United States Air Force, 1950 graduate of Hopkinton High School. He worked 38 years at Raytheon and a longtime volunteer at St. John's Church. Dennis Lyford, 69 years old, proud member of the uh, Teamsters Union, retired from Roosevelt Concrete, Hopkins High School grad, 1962. Lived over there on Spring Street, down the street from Roy, I believe. Is that right? Raymond Kennedy, 75, USMC, Framingham High School, 1956. He worked in the trucking industry. I believe his daughter is married to one of the Marquardonses. Charles Kent, 55 years old, U.S. Army. He was born in North Carolina, but he grew up in Hopkinton. I think he graduated about 1976 from Hopkinton High School. Joe Tassia, 82, U.S. Army, Korean War vet, an engineer and a realtor. He lived here for 50 years. Fred Hunt, 87 years old, U.S. Army, Hopkins High School grad, 1945. Worked at GE. Must have been a good baseball player because he had a tryout with the Red Sox when he got out of high school. John Fritz, 93. 
in the Navy, pilot instructor, 1941-1945. David Martin, only 52, Coast Guard, worked at Princeton Instruments. His obituary said he was an avid horseshoe player. To have that in your obituary, he must have been <laughs> very avid. Grew up on Lakeshore Drive. Robert Nealon Jr., 70 years old, U.S. Army. Called him Terry. Went to Marion High School. Captain in the Army, one of the uh, Neilans that chose not to be a lawyer. <laughs> Ernie Polini, 92 years old, Navy veteran, worked at Normac and Westboro there. Uh, many talents, accordion player, fisherman, and figure skater. Well, Miss Ernie, quite the figure around here for years. Leonard Pearson, 71 years old, United States Army. Owner of the Sunnyside Cafe or Wally's Restaurant in Ashland, I think some of you remember that. Very active at St. John's. Joseph Pinot, 84 years old, United States Air Force. Longtime Natick resident, but lived his last 20 years in Hopkinton. Dominic Haveri, 85 years old. United States Army, Framingham Fireman, decided to retire to Hopkinton for his final years. Davidson Welch, 93 years old, U.S. Air Force, or so, I'm not sure, there seems to be Army Air Force, that was in the late 40s, I'm not sure what the definition was. Popular local artist, lifelong Hopkinton resident, that's his, uh, that football field is named after his father. <coughs> Robert Higgins Sr., United States Air Force. Among one of his jobs, he was a truck driver for Terry Oil. He retired from that and moved to Georgia a few years ago. Edward Drennan, 90 years old. Raised in his early years in Hopkinton. Moved to Framingham, became a firefighter. Frank Vienno, 87, <coughs> worked for the railroad and also uh, as an auto dealer. Foster Yaden, 82 years old, United States Army, kind of a renaissance man, <coughs> played semi-pro hockey, he was a school teacher, opened the sticky wicket, and I believe he Went, moved on from that to horse racing. Paul Doherty, 87 years old, another Navy man, school teacher, founder of uh, Angels Garden Center, which is still there today, run by Jeffrey. Walter Ford, 94, formerly of Hopkinton, Army veteran, retired to Florida. Dick Whitney, 82 years old, Navy, a commercial developer and a realtor. John Donovan, 93 years old, United States Army, 1940 Hopkinton High School grad, civic leader in Hopkinton for many years before his move up to the North Shore. William McRobert, 74 years old, United States Air Force. Many years with Hopkinton Police Department, retiring as chief. Hopkinton High School class, 1958. Oscar Kamishlian, 77 years old, local plumber. Moved to Hopkinton in 1955, raised his family here. <coughs> Harold Tolstrup, 87, United States Army. Worked at Fenwall, left his <coughs> wife Lillian, married to her for 50 years, another Spring Street veteran. Right. His last name, I don't know, I did not know him. <coughs> John 
you have, you have the paper there, Chris, I don't want to mess up his name, a 74 years old, a Marine, lifelong FBI agent, and a Naval Academy grad. And then just yesterday, um, in the uh, obituaries, uh, Don Lehman, 88 years old, uh, formerly of Pennsylvania, I believe he moved up here to be with his son. Um, his services have yet to been held. So that's the list of Hopkins and veterans we've lost this year. It's a little lot larger than normal, but I don't know what's normal. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the Thank you. Thank you.